Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to SGFC Bank Limited Q4 FY23 Earnings Conference Call on the financial results presented by the management of SGFC Bank. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after a brief commentary by the management. Should you need assistance during the conference call? Please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Srinivasan Vaidyanathan, Chief Financial Officer, SDFC Bank. Thank you and over to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Tanvi. Uh, good evening and a warm welcome to all the participants. Uh, let's look at uh, the key macro indicators observed during the quarter before we get to the details on the earnings. Uh, various indicators suggest economic activity was holding up well in Q4. GST collections continue to be robust. March 23 recorded 13% growth year on year. Uh, full year 23 GST collections recorded a growth of 21%. Manufacturing PMI at 56.4 has remained in the expansionary zone since July 21. Services activity is holding up well. Services PMI at 57.8 continues to remain strong. Healthy trend in government capital spending augurs well. Q4 23 year on year growth of 18% and full year government capital spending growth of 22.8% uh, bodes well. Payment system indicate business activity continues to be robust with 15% growth in RTGS NIFT transactions value and a 51% growth in UPA payments. On the consumption side, consumers are moving towards higher value products driven by changes in technology and regulations. We have seen customer preferences towards SUV, MPV type of segment and higher capacity two-wheelers. Two-wheeler and passenger vehicles witnessed continued improvement. During the quarter, our retail card issuing spends also showed robust growth of 31% year on year. Rabi crops sowing is progressing well with approximately 3.3% improvement to last year's level. IMD is forecasting normal monsoon this year, which also bodes well for the semi-urban and rural activity. Global financial market volatility could weigh in on domestic growth. Going forward, there are risks stemming from possibility of global slowdown, continued geopolitical tensions, and any further deepening of foreign banking crisis. We estimate India's GDP growth at 6.8% in financial year 23, and expected to be over 6% in financial year 24. Let's go through certain key themes. On the distribution expansion, we added 638 branches during the quarter, taking the total branch addition in financial year 23 to 1,479. The total branch network of the bank stands at 7,821. On the payment acceptance points, the bank has 3.9 million, year-on-year -year growth of 30%, as adoption of Yapar app builds momentum, we witnessed upwards of 75,000 new additions per month during this year. Wealth management is offered in over 923 locations through Hub and Spoke model, expanded by 232 locations in the quarter. In CRB, our SME businesses are present in more than 90% of the districts. Rural business expanded to 1.65 lakh villages and is on track to reach the objective of over 2 lakh villages. Gold loan processing is now offered in 4,182 branches, a threefold increase over March 22. In the customer franchise building, we acquired 2.6 million new customer liability relationships during the quarter and 10.6 million relationships in the year. With over 83 million customers, we will continue to engage and thereby enabling us to broad base and deepen our relationships. In order to position us for this customer engagement, we have added 31,600 people over the year and 6,300 during the quarter. On cards, we have issued 1.4 million cards during the quarter. The total card space is now 18 million. On the website, our website tra traffic during the quarter received an average of 132 million visits per month with over 106 million unique visitors over the quarter and year-on-year -year growth of around 74%. Our focus on granular deposits continues 
with total deposits amounting to 18.8 lakh crore, an increase of 20.8% over prior year and 8.7% over prior quarter. During the quarter, we added deposits of 150,000 crores. Retail constitutes about 83% of total deposits and has been the anchor of our deposit growth. Retail deposit grew 23% year on year and 7% sequentially. During the quarter, we added retail deposits of 107,000 crores. Wholesale deposits constitute 17% of total deposits. As of March 23, these grew 10% year on year and 15% sequentially. Term deposits registered a robust growth of 30% year on year, ending the quarter at 10.5 lakh crores. Savings deposits recorded a growth of 10% year on year and 5% sequentially, ending at rupees 5.6 lakh crores. Current account deposits grew 14% year on year, ending at 2.7 lakh crores. Overall, CASA deposits grew 11% year on year, ending at 8.4 lakh crores, resulting in a CASA ratio of 44%. Retail CASA deposits grew by 13% year on year. On the advances side, Advances at rupees 16.1 lakh crores grew by 16.9% over prior year and 6% sequentially. This is an addition of approximately 94,000 crores during the quarter and 234,000 crores in the year. Growth of IBPC advances grew by 21% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. Incremental credit to deposit ratio was at 62% for the quarter. CD ratio as of March end stood at 85%. Our retail advances growth was robust. Domestic retail advances grew 20.8% year on year and 5% sequentially, primarily driven by strong performance in personal loans and home loans. In the CRB, which drives our MSME and PSL book, continued its momentum with a year on year growth of 29.8% and quarter on quarter growth of 9.7%. Wholesale segment grew 12.6% year on year and sequentially 4.5% primarily driven by demand from NBFCs, telecom, PSUs, and retail sectors. On the technology update, launches phase up 2.0, which was rebuilt from ground up, is available to public at large. Smart Up Vyapar continue to add new features to our one-stop merchant solutions app. The app has garnered tremendous growth with threefold increase in active users and more than threefold in merchant transactions value. As of March end, over 1.5 million small businesses are on this smarter platform. Express Car Loans is an end-to-end -end digital lending journey platform facilitating instant and hassle-free car disposals, car loan disbursals to existing as well as new to bank customers has been witnessing tremendous response from customers. Express Car Loan volume now contributes 20% of our new, co new car loan volume. We are focused on investments in expanding our distribution network combined with our focused digital offering and relationship management, which continues, to, which continues to fuel growth. Balance sheet remains resilient. LCR for the quarter was at 116%. Capital adequacy ratio is at 19.3%, with CET1 ratio at 16.4%. Let's start with revenues. Net revenues for the quarter were at 32,000 crore, grew by 21% over prior year, driven by gross advances growth of 21%, and deposits growth of 20.8%. And net revenues for the year ended March 31, 2023, were at 1,18,000 crore, grew by 16.3% over prior year. Net interest income for the quarter at 23,352 crores, which is 73% of net revenues, grew by 23.7% over prior year. The core net interest margin for the quarter was, was at 4.1% versus prior year of 4%. Prior quarter was also at 4.1%. Full year core net interest margin was at 4.1%. On interest earning asset basis, the core net interest margin for the quarter was at 4.3%, again, at similar levels to prior quarter. Full year core net interest margin based on interest earning assets was at 4.3%. Getting to the details of other income, total other income at rupees 8,731 crores was up 14.3% versus prior year. Fees and commission income constituting about three-fourths of the other income was at rupees 6,628 crores 
and grew by 17.7% over prior year and 9.5% over prior quarter. <clears throat> Retail constitutes approximately 94% of the fees. FX and derivatives income at slightly above 1,000 crores was higher by 25.6% compared to prior year of 804 crores. Net trading and mark-to-market income were a negative 38 crores for the quarter. Prior quarter was a gain of 261 crores and prior year was a gain of 48 crores. Other miscellaneous income of 1,130 crores includes recoveries from return of accounts and dividends from subsidiaries. Excluding net trading and mark-to-market income, total other income at Rs. 8,769 crores grew by 15.5% over prior year. Operating expenses for the quarter were at 13,462 crores, an increase of 32.6% over prior year. Operating expenses for the year ended March 23 were at 47,652 crores, an increase of 27% over prior year. In this context, it's pertinent to note that we added 1,479 branches and 1,597 ATMs since last year. Cost to income ratio for the quarter was at 42% and for the full financial year was at 40.4%. Moving on to PPOP, for the quarter grew by 13.8% and our pre-provision operating profit was at 18,621 crores. Pre-provision pre operating profit for the quarter is 6.93 times of total provisions in the quarter. Coming to the asset quality, the GNPA ratio was at 1.12% as compared to 1.23% in the prior quarter and 1.17% prior year. Out of the 1.12%, about 14 basis points are standard. Thus, the core GNPA ratio is at 0.98. However, these are included by us as NPA, as one of the other facilities of the borrower is an NPA. Net NPA ratio was at 0.27%, prior quarter was at 0.33%, and prior year was at 0.32%. The slippage ratio for the current quarter is at 28 basis points, or about Rs. 4,900 crores. During the quarter, recoveries and upgrade were Rs. 3,300 crores, or approximately 22 basis points. Write-offs in the quarter were 2,400 crores or approximately 17 basis points. No sale of NP accounts during the quarter. The restructuring under the RBI resolution framework for COVID-19 as of March end stands at 31 basis points or rupees 5,000 crores. In addition, certain facilities of the same borrower which are not restructured is approximately six basis points, 970 crores. Thus totals to 37 basis points. The COVID restructuring in the prior quarter was at 50 basis points. On the provisions reported were around 2,700 crores as against 2,800 crores during the prior quarter and 3,300 crores in the prior year. The total provisions in the current quarter included a build in contingent, of contingent provision of approximately 300 crores. The provision coverage ratio was at 76%. At the end of current quarter, Contingent provisions and floating provisions were approximately 11,150 crores, contingent provisions at 9,700 crores, and floating provisions at 1,450 crores. General provisions were at 7,000 crores. Total provisions comprising specific, floating, contingent, and general were about 176% of the gross non-performing loans. This is in addition to the security held as collateral in several of the cases. Floating, contingent, and general provisions were 1.12% of gross advances as of March quarter. Now coming to credit cost ratios, the total annualized credit cost ratio for the quarter was at 0.67%, prior quarter was at 0.74%, and prior year was at 0.96%. The total credit cost for the full year was at 0.74%. Recoveries which are recorded as miscellaneous income amount to 23 basis points of gross advances for the quarter, against 21 basis points prior quarter and 26 basis points per prior year. The total credit cost ratio net of recoveries was at 44 basis points in the current quarter as compared to 52 basis points in the prior quarter and 70 basis points prior year. The total credit cost ratio net of recoveries for the full year was at 53 basis points. The profit before tax was at 15,936 crores, grew by 22% over prior year, Net profit after tax for the quarter at 12,047 crores 
grew by 19.8 percent over prior year. Net profit for the year ended March 23 was 44,109 crores, up 19.3 percent over prior year. Now some highlights on HTBFS. This on India basis. HTBFS has continued to augment its distribution network and opened 71 branches in the quarter, taking it to 1,492 branches spread across 1,054 cities and towns. Customer franchise grew to 11.9 million customers, adding 2.8 million over last year. The momentum in disbursements continued across all three business segments during the quarter, registering in a healthy growth of 53% year-on-year and 20% sequentially. The total loan book as of March end stood at 70,000 crores, registering 14% year-on-year and 7.6% sequentially. Net interest income for the quarter ended March 23 was at 1,424 crores, a growth of 6.6% quarter-on-quarter. Provisions and contingencies for the quarter were at 268 crores against 313 crores for the prior quarter and 422 crores for the quarter ended March 22. Credit costs for the, for the quarter were at 1.6% as against 2.78% for last year March quarter and 1.95% for the December 22 quarter. Stage 3 as of March end continues to improve and stood at 2.73% against 3.73% as of December end. Provision coverage ratio on stage 3 book increased to 65%. The provision coverage ratio on secured and unsecured book stood at 62% and 96% respectively. Profit after tax for the quarter ended March 23 was 545 crores, a growth of 27.7% year on year. Profit after tax for the year ended, full year ended March 23 was at 1,959 crores compared to 1,011 crores in the previous year, a growth of 93%. Annualized ROA and ROE for the quarter ended March 23 stood at 3.25% and 19.5% respectively. For the year ended, for the full year ended March 23, ROA and ROE stood at 3.07% and 18.7% respectively. Earnings per, earnings per share for the quarter was rupees 6.89 and book value per share was at 144.5 in the in the subsidiary HTBFS. HTBFS remains well capitalized with a total capital adequacy ratio at 20.05% and continues to step up disbursements leveraging a strong distribution spread across 1,492 branches. Now a few uh, on HSL. HSL has a network of 209 branches spread across 147 cities and towns. HSL increases customer base to 4.5 million as of March end. HSL's digital, digital offering continue to enjoy good traction in the market. And during the quarter, around 94% of active clients utilize the services offered through companies' digital platforms. For the quarter, March 23, HSL's total revenue were at rupees 486 crores against 510 crores for last year's same quarter. Profit after tax was at 194 crores against 236 crores for the same quarter last year. Net profit for the year ended March 23 was at 777 crores against 984 crores for last year. Earnings per share in the quarter was rupees 121.95 and book value per share was at 1,131. In summary, our results reflect robustness across various parameters driven diligently and passionately by our people resulting in continued momentum in deposit growth of 21%, and within that, the retail deposit growth, which grew at 23%. Gross advances growth of 21%, and net advances growth of 17%. Operating profit grew by 13.8%. Profit after tax increased by 19.8% for the quarter, and 19.3% for the year. Profit after tax on a consolidated basis increased by 20.6% for the quarter, and 20.9% for the full year delivering the return on asset in the quarter of about 2.2% and return on equity of about 18%. Earnings per share reported in the quarter is at rupees 21.6 at the standalone bank level and rupees 22.6 at the consolidated bank level. Book value per share on a standalone bank is at rupees 502 and at a consolidated bank it is at rupees 519. 
the bank's board has recommended a dividend of rupees 19 per equity share subject to shareholders approval now with that uh, may may I request the operator to open up open up the line for questions please thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session in who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to limit their questions up to two per participant. If time permits, you may join the questions queue for any follow-up questions. The first question is from the line of Maharuk Achania from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, Shini, my first question is on deposit growth. Two to three quarters ago, you had laid down a good roadmap. on your quarterly deposit mobilization and you overachieved that in the fourth quarter so how do we view deposit mobilization in the next 3 to 4 quarters uh, uh if you could give us some similar road map that's my first question okay let, let me finish that and then you come back again um deposit if you see uh, the, the quarter had a growth of uh, 150000 crores Uh, but the more important thing is to look at the retail growth right 1 lakh 7000 crores is the retail growth uh, and it had a very good mix of uh, time deposits uh, and uh, savings account and uh, current account within that retail mix right uh, so that is what you determine as a, a core growth the rest can be transient up and down can happen uh, but it is in track it's in line with what uh, uh, we we had been planning for and what we had been driving to Uh, for the quarter so i i just wanted to make it clear that it's not about the 150000 uh, for you for you to keep in your mind but it is more that uh, 1,7000 retail uh, which is the, which is the uh, core part of what the growth is and if you from there if you take it to say how one should think about it yes that's part of the execution and uh, the the teams are geared up Uh, to continue to execute uh, uh, the the strategy of uh, getting one the new customer on board at 2.6 million uh, in this quarter little more than 10 and a half million in this year so that's part of the uh, the growth model is to bring in the new customers uh, the new branches are for the future right I, i don't want to talk that the new branches are bringing in today's deposit but that's for the future to have that sustainability of that uh, growth over a period of time so it is about new customers it is about working with the existing customers with the greater engagement uh, which you see that the time deposit uh, growth of about 30% uh, again that is uh, coming through the engagement so that's that's where that is getting uh, delivered to um, i would say that we, we are on track to uh, keep building upon these okay and uh, just in terms of was there any interest on tax refund during the quarter no no nothing of any significance okay thanks a lot i'll come back thanks now if you have anything you go ahead now yes uh, yes so uh, my other question was just on uh, cv so if you look at your uh, commercial transportation the growth obviously in this quarter has been very strong it's almost 11% on a sequential basis and it has been very strong even in the last few quarters uh, probably stronger than industry levels as well so what kind of drives it and how do you think about it going ahead it is uh, it is an important segment for us right uh, one uh, the entire commercial and rural banking um, that that includes the uh, ctg Uh, is an important element of how we drive this and uh, this is more uh, we we operate in the segment uh, which is slightly above uh, where our uh, sapi operates and uh, it is an important focus uh, both from a uh, lcv or ulcv and uh, uh, across various kind of a size segment that is also important to us we are also focused on making a holistic uh, kind of a product offering which is not just a, a lending for financing uh, the, these uh, vehicles uh, it is also about getting working capital uh, financing for them so making certain new initiatives there to get the holistic relationship uh, so that uh, the logistics ecosystem as we call it which you have heard from 
uh, Rahul Shukla over the past uh, one or two quarters uh, that is uh, getting initiated to, to execute. It's an important and it's a big growth segment for us and it's priority sector. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from City India. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, Shini. So, firstly, the question on uh, operating cost. Uh, uh, so, that has seen a uh, significant rise in this quarter, both on a year on year basis and on a quarter on quarter. Uh, so, any, any one offs in the employee cost, like say uh, the ESOP or RSUs, what you highlighted in the last quarter as well. And uh, what should be the trend which we should look at it? Uh, uh, maybe for say FY24 uh, in terms of cost to income as well as cost to assets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kunal, thanks for that uh, expenses. Yes, uh, just to touch upon you, you touched upon the ESOPs and RSUs. Yes, that will continue. And uh, you know that in the in the prior quarter, it was not a full quarter impact of the ESOPs and RSUs because that went out later in October or November. So uh, part, and then now you had a full uh, quarter impact of that. But it's not a one timer. That's an ongoing. That's that's one. Uh, to the branches, right? We opened uh, 600 odd branches last quarter towards the end. That comes in, and then even this quarter, we have uh, opened up a little more than 600 branches. So that that's also an ongoing impact uh, that comes in. Right? The way uh, you think about uh, the cost is, uh, which we have in the past said, uh, as you build the retail, um, or you build the retail uh, deposit franchise, and you start to get back into the higher proportion of the retail asset franchise, uh, there will be upfront cost that comes in, which is what you're seeing, right? The, the cost to income, for the full year at 40.4 or currently 42. If you go back in line, that's kind of a, in 19, for example, it was close to 40, the cost of income was 40. And we, uh, we had mentioned that our cost of income will go, will go past 40, 41, and, and the quarter or two can touch 42. We'll operate at that level. And uh, if we operate at that level, uh, there is an opportunity why, uh, uh, what presents to us this opportunity is on the benign credit environment. So if you look at the credit, uh, 10 basis points of a better credit, uh, when, when that opportunity is taken and invested uh, in expenses, that is about 1.5% to cost to income. Right? That's uh, about 1.5%. And, and uh, so if you think about it, uh, we, we do see that the uh, credit cost benign conditions now and, and in some time to come. And uh, so we, our goal is to get this maturity uh, both on the branches and the productivity curve up for the people that we have added 31,000 people over the year and 6,600 people in the quarter to get them up the curve and be productive. And as things normalize, the revenues starts to come in. Right? That's the ramp up on the volumes that we are trying to do to get that in so that it pays through the revenue and the credit as, as the maturity, the new cohorts come in and, and get to be the new cohorts, get to a mature state, credit cost normalizes to pre-COVID levels, not to the COVID levels, to pre-COVID levels. So you get to a stable uh, return on asset, right? You continue to operate in that 1.9 to 2.1 type of a range on return on asset, but you, you took this opportunity on the credit to invest in the expenses. So that's how you think about that. Sure, and uh, this uh, ESOP expenses, so what would be the quantum for the full quarter? The full quarter, the ESOP and RSU is close to 400,000. 300, uh, no, 400 crores or 300 and 300, close to 300 crores. Okay. Okay. And secondly, with respect to uh, the deposit growth, uh, so was it more skewed towards the, the last uh, fortnight significant part of it uh, or? Uh, have we seen the impact of it in terms of the uh, and maybe the overall cost of deposits? Uh, so uh, obviously it will not play out in this uh, uh, 4Q, but over a period with this kind of a deposit uh, uh, traction, uh, what would be uh, maybe overall the margin trajectory? Uh, maybe because we have not seen any improvement over the past three quarters. Uh, so uh, should it sustain or we see some kind of a pressure on margins going forward? Okay, yeah. Uh, two aspects to it. One, the deposits as such, right? Yes, 
Let's see, to the extent that there are some wholesale deposits, uh, they, they will be chunky and they will come and go depending on how uh, the wholesale uh, business deals with their uh, balance sheet, right? So that's part of one that happens. But the core retail uh, is something that, uh, that is what uh, I alluded to in the prior question, that is what we drive to. The rest uh, tries to come and fill in and go. Uh, the, the next aspect of it that you asked about how to think about margin, right? Uh, our margin operates in a very narrow band, right? Uh, uh, and it's narrow band because the modified duration of the book, call it about 1.2 years, 1.3 years thereabout. And uh, the, uh, within, within a reasonable lead and lag effect, which can have 10, 20 basis points at any time or 10, 15 basis points at any time, it can move up or down. Uh, but right now you are seeing some uh, lead effect, right? The cost of funds will come. Uh, it, is, it is already in this quarter, the cost of funds has moved up. I think we put up a chart to show sequentially both the yield movement as well as the cost of funds movement uh, is up. See operator here, please hold while we reconnect the management line. It seems to be disconnected. the management oh. line reconnected, so you may proceed now. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, Kunal, I don't know where I dropped off, but I was, I was talking about the margin as such. Uh, yeah, it, it, there, is a, there is a lead effect that happens uh, when, when the uh, asset pricing starts to move in front and the cost of funds on the deposit starts to lag. Uh, there, there is some lag, right, on that one, but still uh, our margin, as we said, operates uh, in the range of 3.94 to 4.3, 4.4. Uh, given the mix uh, still of the wholesale mix, which is still uh, pretty high in the book at 53, 54% wholesale mix, uh, we are at the lower end of the range. But uh, whether 5, 10 basis points, any quarter can move up or down, it can happen. Right? 5, 10 basis points is nothing. It can, it can change. And it's essentially effect of uh, the, the lead of the lag that can happen there. Sure. So this is a 30 bits uh, kind of an expansion in deposit cost uh, uh, that I think that uh, should accelerate uh, in, in one view in terms of the increase or the incremental delta which can be there. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you ask me whether all of the deposit uh, uh, increase has already uh, fully come in, I would say no, not yet, right? It will come. Not because we are changing any rates uh, uh, in isolation, no. It is simply a function of as the book starts to reprice, the lag effect, it comes in. But still, from a margin, similarly, we, pri we price the loans too, right? Some fixed rate loans go out, and we bring in new fixed rate loans at new rates. And uh, so it's a continuous effect. Five, ten basis points, always possible. But we, we have been very stable in that range of 4, 4.1 for some time. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and all the rest. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hardik Shah from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Srini. Uh, this is Rahul. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, Rahul, yes. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, um, and thanks for the commentary and uh, good numbers. 
just had two three question uh, going back to the previous question on margins uh, so just uh, thinking through about the repricing of uh, the uh, floating book and the new fixed book that you have onboarded let's say in the last 6 9 months in the time the rate cycle started um so um when do we see the full benefit of that play out so floating book would be getting repriced pretty much as we speak but the a new fixed rate fixed rate book that you onboarded um that when the that start to show up in the in the yield number uh and when is that inflection point now that the rbi has kind of you know paused the rates so how much more repricing benefit we can get is essentially my question yeah, no, you, you can get uh, more. See, the, the fixed rate book, call it uh, two, three years it runs, right? The fixed rate book runs two, three years, and that's uh, call it 40, 44% of the book, 45% of the book round number, that's the, that's the fixed rate. Uh, and uh, it is started, and it will continue for some time. But at the same time, uh, the cost of funds will also come in and catch up. So we, if you look at our margin as such, where what is the rate play in the margin is minimal rate play in the margin that's why i talked about the modified duration 1.2 1.3 years uh, that keeps that in a very narrow band and only some lead lag effect comes in uh, what is more uh, from a margin point of view is the structural change in the composition of the book uh, where uh, the wholesale book uh, which uh, 46 percent uh, it was 45, 46 before COVID went all the way to 55, and now it's at like 53, 54%. Uh, and as that starts to wear off and come down on the retail, which is accelerating right now, all, all the investments that we are doing, uh, retail that is accelerating, as that starts to come, you see the structural thing can, can come up. And when that comes up, the credit cost also comes to normalize, right? If you go back, when, when the margin is 4.3, the credit cost is 100, 110 basis points, right? So you. What you, what you get on the margin, you pay to some extent on the credit cost, right? But that is why if you look at the return on asset, that remains at that stable level of 2.2.1. Understood. So, okay, fair enough. Uh, the second question was actually on, um, on the cost to income. So, uh, given that, you know, next year credit growth may be slower than what we had last year, uh, but we will still, uh, you know, be making the investments, you know, that we've talked about. So uh, do we have another year before it peaks out or, you know, 42 is, is where you would call it out as a peak cost to income? No, I, I won't say that uh, we have peaked out, but uh, over, a, over a period of uh, year, if you say, maybe that's the kind of level we'd like to run, but uh, quarter to quarter can go up and down a bit, right? It can. That's why even in this quarter, uh, I've been saying that uh, if you if you look at only one quarter up down possible depends on what's out there what what we have done uh, both from a volume booking point of view or any of the arc, uh, marketing activity point of view or the card spend activity point of view whatever we do that can came that can keep going up or down but uh, largely as as the uh, lapping we started the branch in March 22. Right, right now one has gone by and then the second year has gone by. So if you look at 15 months, in 15 months we have added 2,000 odd branches we have added, right? So another four quarters to five quarters, things should lap itself from a comparison point of view, uh, it should lap. Uh, then after that, there, it would be almost 18 months to 24 months for the revenues to start coming in to support that cost. And, and as I told the, the, to, to the other, uh, uh, on the other question, the credit cohort starts to mature and you see some credit cost also coming to normalize. That's helpful. Just two more uh, small questions. Uh, this credit card uh, on book balances, you know, the growth has been, appears to be quite tepid. Um, what could be the reason behind it? I understand revolves may not be improving, but um, can you just throw some more light, uh, the EMI book growth within the card space or the revolves, how are they behaving? Yeah, see, it is also normally, I think, uh, from a quarter point of view, the fourth quarter is normally lower, coming off a big uh, festival type of a spend in the December quarter. The pay downs happen. Uh, that, that's one. Uh, number two, yes, I, you already alluded to the, the revolvers uh, uh, or the revolving balances, we don't see it going up yet, not yet. We don't see that up. Uh, three, 
we also measure the uh, funding that the card customers provide, right? Uh, and the card customers provide funding which is more than five times the card balances, the card ANR that we carry. Uh, so enormous liquidity, enormous funding, deposit funding is kept by those customers with us. Uh, so uh, naturally pay downs are happening. The spend, I you, the spend, is, spend is quite robust, right? 30 odd percent growth in spend. Yeah. But but the profitability may be substantially lower than what you've earned in the past um, because the the um, interest yielding balances uh, you know have structurally come down. So I just think from that standpoint. Um, yeah, yeah. So, Shri, just one last so question. This, uh, no, I, I don't want to leave that question or, or leave that comment open on profitability. See, the, the profitability again, uh, one has to look at it over a, a cycle on on profitability, and two. Uh, uh, certainly not not uh, quarter on quarter on profitability. Uh, number two, uh, always there are levers that get operated on. Uh, that means uh, what what is it that you earn and what is it that you can spend. That is something that we always constantly look at to match. Uh, and what are those levers? Uh, you, you've seen some of those levers on the on the spend side, right? Uh, where the if the, if the revenue is somewhat uh, lower because of lower revolver or other things, then you spend appropriately on the other side, on the on the expense side. Uh, but there are still at this time when the spend is going up, we do want to encourage, and we do think that the revolver will come. And uh, while it has not yet come, uh, we are putting those investments out there in various programs, car programs. The last uh, last question, rather, you know, just uh, you know, just want some comment from you. This uh, are we allowed this uh, you know pay later or pre-approved credit line on UPI? Uh, we understand you already have that product on your on your website. We saw that. Um, can you just throw some light as to what is the incremental thing that RBI has done? Um, and since you've already been running this product, you know how many customers you have, and do you see this uh, as being a large you know product you know proposition that can be uh, you know in the future? See, the product always was there. I think now that EMI uh, type is something that is also uh, coming in. Uh, it's too early to say whether this particular UPA channel is going to be a big driver into that, but we, we already have uh, various other channels, our, our brand channels, our VRM channels, and our direct marketing channels that uh, trigger this uh, quite a lot for us. And um, so we will have to see whether what the UPA channel does. But then keep in mind the UPA channels, the ticket sizes are uh, small. I think as an industry, the ticket sizes are uh, in like uh, three-digit rupees. We have it um, at least 10 times more the industry average on a ticket size. But still, uh, at that size, we can't see it. We'll have to wait and see how that works. Thank you, Srini. Thank you for being so generous and patient to answer my question. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Kumar from JP Morgan Chase and Company. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, Srini. Uh, sir, uh, just two questions. One is on this other asset, uh, you know, the growth rate in the other asset is very high. So is this, will this be due to the RIDF shortfalls? Uh, and the second is, uh, you know, now that we're coming closer to the merger, uh, so HTC Bank standalone CD incremental CD is obviously pretty good, but on a pro forma basis, it's still near that maybe near that 100, 800 and uh, so. From a growth perspective, do you look? At, will you look at like LCR, uh, and will there be like a target with, uh, under which you can get the LDR to below 100 percent? Thank you, sir. So okay, yeah. A uh, couple of things you asked about other asset. Uh, other asset has got uh, I think 100 and 35 to 1,35,000 1, 1, 1, to 1,45,000 crores or something movement in a quarter, uh, slightly yeah. 10,000 yeah. crores or something. There will be part RIDF and part various other things that go through it. And, and similarly, I would urge you to look at other liabilities too, which also has moved from 85,000 crores to 95,000 crores, I think. That also has moved up by about 10,000 crores. So there, there are several things that go into that. Uh, but over a period of a year, if that's what you're thinking about, yes, there, there is a component of RADF, which is part of that. 
uh, which is uh, moved up. Call it 40,000 crores of RIDF, which is there. And that's part of our, what we have laid out our strategy is to, we always optimize between uh, various components of what is available uh, in the market on PSL. Uh, and this is one of the things that is available. And, and we tap, that, tap into that too. The second aspect that you asked about the uh, CD ratio, I guess, right, on a performa, how do you think yeah. about the way you think about the CD ratio is that a, day one, whatever happens is inevitable, right? So when you add A plus B, uh, it shakes out to whatever the CD ratio comes out to. But from then on, how you look at it is, what is the incremental CD ratio, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, to the extent that the incremental CD ratio operates uh, in a range which is below the uh, bank's current range, uh, that's where we go and catch up and, and bring it to the current level where we are. So that's how we are thinking about it. Uh, day one is inevitable. But over a period of time, uh, as the maturity profile of the uh, book in HDFC Limited, uh, they, their uh, borrowing uh, matures, we replace it with deposits, uh, we get to a better place. Over a period of, call it three to five years. Very clear, Shini. Uh, would you have the Performa LCR, or will that come after HDFC reports? Not, not yet. We'll, we'll have it in okay. due course of time as we progress more towards the effective date. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adarsh Parsampuriya from CLS Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Shini and team. Uh, thanks uh, for the question. Um, question is again on OPEX. Uh, we've dwelled into uh, you know the branch and distribution expansion, but um, somehow if you just track uh, the overheads per branch or the employee cost per uh, employee, that's also going up, right? Even adjusting for the distribution increase. So just wanted to have a handle on that because usually I would think that as you add the incremental branch, the cost lesser. Uh, the uh, you know the foot soldier that you're adding is cheaper than the average cost. So I just wanted to understand uh, that the why the cost increases are materially about uh, the distribution expansion that we are seeing. Yeah, so, so one is the, uh, it is important that uh, we are making investments in branches as well as people, right? The 31,000 people or the 6,600 sequentially that also adds to the cost. It, it is there, and. Uh, what, the productivity of all of these comes in, then you see that in the revenue and then uh, that evens up, right? You have to wait. But if you look at the branch productivity itself, look at the deposit per branch, uh, it, it is up, right? Uh, 250, 260,000 crores per branch. That productivity is also up. So it's not just about whether the uh, cost per branch is up or uh, so it will be up uh, because if the inflation in the country is operating at the rate of uh, 6 to 8% or the, the pay increases are happening at that kind of a level, the, co the cost will go up. Uh, but it's a question of getting that uh, productivity driven up to pay for it through the volumes and revenues. Got it. Okay. And, um, and will this continue now? I think the pressures of um, inflation and attrition is a little lower. So would you expect that pressure to be lower because then you probably have an OPEX growth which more mirrors the distribution and the employee expansion rather than being a higher number than that? It's too early whether uh, the, uh, what, what effect on the inflation uh, comes through into the expense is too early on that one. Uh, but, but again, I, I will tell you to, to look at uh, from a cost to income point of view, that it uh, moves um, in, in that range of 42 something. And then as we progress over four quarters, six quarters, it starts to keep coming down. And I think among various things, while we don't talk forward looking in, in any of those aspects, but from a cost point of view, we have said that over a period of time, you should get back to the mid thirties as the productivity starts to come in. Got it. And uh, really my last question is on the PSL part, right? We did have some shortfalls, the RIDF book went up. If you can, uh, you know, obviously there was a question on other assets as well. So if you can call out the RIDF book where it was, where it ended, and uh, given how you've achieved PSL now, would you expect that uh, uh, the increase in RIDF will uh, moderate, will stop, if you can just indicate uh, directionally where we are headed, and uh, what was the status of PSL compliances uh, by the end of the year? 
Okay. Others, uh, if you think about whether uh, where will uh, where will RADF go or something, see, this is a dynamic equation that one solves, right? Uh, because that is because that is how you optimize this. Uh, the, the goal number one uh, is to go organically build. And the uh, distribution reach that we are uh, going after, uh, I alluded to uh, our CRB business in more than 90% of the districts. And at 1.65 lakh villages, uh, wanting to go to more than 2 lakh villages, they're all in the direction of how we organically grow. That's, that's the number one uh, from a prioritization point of view. Uh, do it yourself. Uh, it gives you better returns. Uh, you manage that in a, on a sustainable basis. Uh, then every, everything else is a filler depending on what is available, and you optimize that through what is the least cost. And uh, all of them are in play, from PSLC to RADF to IBB, uh, IBPC to all of them are in play in terms of how we manage that. Any uh, actual data around uh how your PSL stacked up and what your RIDF book was last year and now, only, only the factual numbers. Yeah, I think it will, uh, I just checked with the team, I think it eventually gets published in course of time. Yeah. You, you'll, it. Get a, you'll get access to it and uh, the team will publish that. It's coming. Yeah. Perfect. This is helpful, Shri. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Shukla from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. So for FY24, would you broadly expect uh, similar branch and employee additions as FY23? Um, if, uh, FY24, uh, the branch addition, uh, we expect to, at this, at this moment, we expect to continue the speed at which, uh, not necessarily every quarter evenly, but uh, the, the speed at which we have done um, over the last 15 months to 18 months, we will continue. Uh, we do this, uh, we take stock of this every quarter to see one, availability and the uh, market potential, identification of the market where we need with the potential, that, that's one exercise that we do. And the second exercise we do is that look back to see the performance of what we have already done and how that is progressing on the curve, right? Uh, uh, but yes, as of now, the approach is to continue with that, uh, but subject to evaluation every quarter in terms of that, the, the trajectory that we are continuing is indeed the trajectory that is yielding those results that we have planned for. Sure. Recently, you had cut some of your short-term MCLR rates. Uh, could you explain what is the trigger for that? See, the way, uh, the, the methodology, how you apply tenor premia uh, is something that we uh, uh, modified or we got, got that to a place, right? Uh, and it's in the front end, and we don't have much volumes in, in that end. And uh, that's part of what, uh, this is not something that captures big, uh, big volume. Uh, from an overall sense point of view. Uh, one other thing is that MCLR loans, the floating rate MCLR loans, uh, is 6% of our total book uh, and very little into the front end bucket there. So you said 6%? 6% is okay. the floating rate MCLR book, but in the front end where you alluded to, very little is there. Understood. Uh, just going back to the deposits part, right? So as you rightly mentioned, the newer branches would probably have not contributed as much. So just trying to understand what is driving these numbers, because you are obviously not paying the highest rate in the market. Uh, everybody is chasing deposits, and yet your numbers are meaningfully ahead of all your peers in terms of absolute deposit mobilization. So just trying to understand what is it that you, are doing, you have done differently this year, uh, which is driving these kind of growth for you. Okay. See, there are a few things, right? Um, I can talk two, three things I will mention, several things, but I guess we will continue, and we have mentioned this in the past, so you'll recollect. One is you need to leverage the branch network and the brand to bring in new customers. Um, let, me, let me give you that. Uh, in 2018, we got in 3 million customers in uh, liability relationships. In 19, 4 million, 20, 6 million, 21, 7 million, 
22, 8.5 million, 23, 10.5 million. So you need to bring in new customers and that is what we have done to ramp up. So when you bring in new customers, like the way the branch maturity is connected, uh, similar to the branch maturity, the customer maturity also takes about 24 months. Right? So if we need to harvest the potential of the customer to be the primary banking and get the balances, I cannot bring the customer today and get the balances today. I will, when I bring the customer today, we get some balances today. It is about getting that potential of the customer we got in two years ago, three years ago, to do the work now, right? Our RM's engagement to get that now. So that's one. Customer is important. And I give you an idea of, of the ramp up on the customers that we have done. And we continue to do that to keep that pipeline uh, open and running. That, that's one on the customers. Two, from, a, from an execution uh, mindset and uh, our RM's focus, uh, we did that uh, sometime March, April last year uh, in 22, where we said we want to amend our scorecard to ensure have an element of a time deposit task with a 14%, 14% penetration um, in our base for time deposit. We said it is a low penetration. We have enormous room to go for it. And we don't need to pay for it, right? Uh, in fact, if anything, uh, we are slightly, we, we are at or slightly below uh, certain other uh, players on this. Uh, and uh, if you look at the time deposit growth in the recent quarter, I think it gave about 30% or so growth in the time deposit, uh, the, the growth that we have had. And uh, let, me, let me tell you another way to even think about it, and that's how the front line is driving it, right? Uh, it's about, call it, uh, from, from uh, 7,000 odd branches, and uh, call it maybe 50 deposits, uh, such deposits a month at a ticket size four five lakhs type of granular time deposit, right? Fifty such deposits, seven thousand odd branches, four five lakhs you get uh, per uh, per customer. Uh, that, then that's the kind of a drive. And then you got all the RNs that we are having and the salespeople we are having in the branches to go get that engagement. So it's it's better engagement. It's the granular, granular across all branches, unleashing this to say this is an important element to increase the penetration. Our penetration is, uh, we have grown 30%, but still is about up by 50 basis points, right? We have a long way to go to increase that penetration. We will be relentless in getting that full relationship of the customer through this. I gave you one or two examples of what uh, we're trying to drive to. This should very clear. Uh, last question, what are the milestones and timelines with respect to the merger now? With respect to the merger, if you see um, 28, 28th or so, we had the uh, NCLT order uh, that we got. Uh, we made the application to SEBI uh, as it relates to the uh, change in promoter. Um, and uh, giving notices to mutual fund holders. So we've gone to SEBI to get their permission. We've also gone to IRDA uh, from a change of promoter on the insurance side. So we are awaiting uh, what uh, they, they need to come back and uh, give us the nod to go. Uh, that's, that's one, right? And then once all of this is there, then we circle back with RBI to take it to the final stages. We think from a timing point of view, it is June, July, it's possibly uh, July is where we think uh, the time frame is uh, as we speak, uh, given where we are on various things. All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you for answering so many questions. That's all. Thank you. The question after this will be the last question due to paucity of time. The next question is from the line of MB Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, just two questions from my side. One is, in your expectations, looking at the current deposit rates, how does the cost of funds move in your balance sheet over the next few quarters? Okay. So, uh, with the current deposit mix, um, the cost of funds will start to inch up as the 30% uh, the growth that we have had in time deposit in the recent quarter starts to fully come in, right? So uh, the uh, cost of funds will go up uh, only because of the mix of deposits, not because of the rates. Uh, and uh, similarly, the yield on assets also needs to go up. That is part of 
how we are pricing sure. to say that we need to relay. So again, within the narrow band, lead lag effect happens. Five, 10 basis points can change in any time, uh, any quarter. But again, uh, we operate in that narrow band. As I told you, the modified duration is uh, quite matched, 1.2 or so on both sides. In a, in a sense, Srin, the question was, uh, you know, we looked at about 20 odd basis points increase uh, sequentially and also in the previous quarter. That's uh, quite a good performance. So that's why I'm just trying to understand as to whether this 20 moves closer to 30, 40, or is it a number closer to the current range? I, I don't want to venture into giving a forward looking to say what sort of a volume and mix will come as we go into the April to June quarter. But again, it, it operates within that range narrow range sure. or margin sure. is 4.1 plus minus 5 10 basis points that's where that's where, that's where it operates okay. the second question Srini uh, if I look at the fee income line uh, the growth in retail asset driven fees as well as when you look at the cost line the DSA related fees both of them seems to have slowed down um, or has grown very slowly uh, is it any indication of the situation on the ground or you think that uh, the volumes still is quite impressive when you look at uh, when you look at the retail businesses yeah no uh, it is is not something indication of the ground we do see a good amount of demand i think alluded to in terms of the customer preferences in terms of higher value chain type of products that is, that is what we see the example i gave you was the suv mpv type right or or a higher horsepower uh, two wheeler type those are those are or for that matter a 5g phone rather than a normal phone. So these, these are some of those things that are happening in the market where people are, and are also the, the producers, the manufacturer are also looking at uh, high, high margin type of a products. Uh, so it is not uh, some, we, we see good amount of demand that is there. So it is for us that it has to pass through our credit filters and then we are there to take it. So in your sense that there is no slowdown in demand at least at this point of time? Nothing material from that sense that uh, it is about the customer segment, that's all. And, and I can tell you, even our, our subsidiary customer segment, which is a couple of notches below the bank segment, uh, has also shown enormous uh, traction in terms of the disbursals and volume growth there. One final clarification, there was a recent RBI clarif uh, guideline on uh, instances that one can charge on uh, uh, the various fee income lines. How comfortable are you with respect to that guideline? It's, a, it's still a white paper. It's trying to understand your perspective about this. Thing. Oh, on the on the penal charges, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, we are, we are, I think within reason we operate. The minor things can happen, but then again, uh, the the penal charges are in the direction of where uh, we would like to operate, and where some minor things we need to throw up, we will do. But uh, it is within the within within our realm of how we are operating. Perfect. Good. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Srinivasan Vaidyanathan for any closing comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us today. Uh, we continue to be available over the next uh, several days. And if anything else that you would like to know more, I uh, would be happy to engage and talk. Thank you. Thank Have a great you. evening. Bye-bye. On behalf of HDFC Bank Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.